Well, here we are, making the last turn and heading for the home stretch. And I'll tell you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, then you've been living under a rock since the beginning of September, which is about the same time they started putting out the Christmas stuff at Walmart. Now, you realize that in seven days, seven days, it'll be Christmas Eve. Which means for me that I've still got plenty of time to shop for Debbie. As a matter of fact, as long as the marathon station stays open next Sunday evening, I am sure that I'll be able to get her those wiper blades she's had her eyes on. And there's nothing better than a quart of motor oil to stuff a stocking. Of course, all this is important because gifts are a big part of Christmas. I mean, back when I was teaching school, I'd ask my kids two questions around this time of year. I'd ask them to write down the worst gift they'd ever received and the best gift they'd ever received. And I'll tell you, I got all kinds of answers. Now, for the best gifts, some would say things that were, you know, really big, impressive, like, like uh, uh, cars and game systems, maybe vacations. And then I got some that was sort of sentimental. Now, I got to tell you, it's usually from the, the, the girls. Stuff like, like a visit from their grandparents, you know, things like that. And then there'd be my favorite, some of the, my favorite gifts of all. These were the ones that came from the, the, one, uh, the kids that I considered kind of suck-ups. You know, they'd say, the best gift I ever received is having Mr. Rudiger as my history teacher. <laughs> you know what you call an answer like that? Two words, extra credit. Now, those were the best gifts. And the worst, well, a lot of them would say, oh, a card or underwear or any amount of money under $5. Now, those were the things they'd usually say. Of course, they were young, and so their answers were pretty much what I expected. As a matter of fact, they were, they were the same sort of thing I would have given back when I was their age. But I'll tell you, as I've gotten older, well, my answer has, has changed quite a bit, especially as it relates to the best gifts I've ever received. You see, for me, the most special gifts are the ones that involve some kind of sacrifice on the part of the giver. And I'm not talking about cutting off an arm or anything silly like that. I'm not even talking about money. But something that a person took time to make. Man, those are the gifts that touch me. Because I got to tell you, as I get older, there is nothing more special, more precious than time. You see, there's something wonderful knowing that a gift involved a little more effort than scrolling down Amazon. I'm more touched by the kind of gift, that kind of gift, and it, and it makes me feel closer to the giver. But I'll tell you, that goes beyond just the stuff that I receive. You see, as a giver, I feel different when I give something that represents more to me than just money. I remember maybe, oh gosh, it must have been 40 years ago, I gave my mother this little pillow that I had made. I'd made it myself. Had a counted cross stitch design on, on the front. Now I felt really proud of that gift. Even though it wasn't nearly as well made as something that would be spit out of an Indonesian factory. But you know, although I'd given my mother hundreds and hundreds of gifts during my 60 years of life, that's the one I remember. I don't remember what I gave her last year, but I remember that one. Because in giving something I made, I was giving a little of myself. And I'll tell you, that made the gift special. At least it did for me. And you know, I think that's really the theme of a story written by a guy named uh, William Sidney Porter, a writer who was better known by his pen name, O. Henry. You see, in this story, The Gift of the Magi, we can see the power gifts can have over both the one who gives and the one who receives. Of course, as we think about Christmas gifts and, and givers, 
we really don't want to forget about the greatest gift of all. And of course, I'm talking about the gift of Jesus Christ. The one whose birth we'll be celebrating in a week. You see, it was through that little baby that God entered our space. Something that the, the apostle described to the Philippians. He wrote, Christ was truly God, but he did not try to be equal with God. Instead, he gave up everything and became a slave when he became like one of us. Christ was humble. He obeyed God and even died on a cross. Then God gave Christ the highest place and honored his name above all others. So with the name of Jesus, everyone will bow down, those in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And to the glory of God the Father, everyone will openly agree, Jesus Christ is Lord. Now I'm telling you, this is God's gift to us. Doesn't come in a package, came in a person. In fact, I think you could call it the ultimate sacrificial gift because it involved his death on a cross. And I'll tell you something else. This gift can absolutely change us. And I'm talking about the ones who receive it. You see, because of what God has freely given, the world's never going to be the same. You recognize that. The world will never be the same. And I'll tell you why. If we trust that it's real, and if we trust that it has power, and if we trust that it has been given to us with no strings attached, there's no buts, there's no ends, there's no maybes, now we have reason to know peace. And I'm talking about real peace because when Jesus died on a cross, we died too. And when we died, the power of sin was broken and we were set free. Free from worry and shame and guilt and free to live lives that reflect love, the love and the grace and the mercy of God. Again, just listen to what Paul wrote. But the gift that God was kind enough to give was very different from Adam's sin. That one sin brought death to many others. Yet in, even, in an even greater way, Jesus Christ alone brought God's gift of kindness to many people. There's a lot of difference between Adam's sin and God's gift. That one sin led to punishment, but God's gift made it possible for us to be acceptable to him. Even though we have sinned many times, death ruled like a king because Adam had sinned, but that cannot compare with what Jesus Christ has done. God has been so kind to us, and he has accepted us because of Jesus. So we will live and rule like kings. Sin pays off with death. But God's gift is eternal life given by Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, through God's gift to us, man, those who receive it are changed. But I'll tell you something else. So is the giver. He was changed too. And now I'm talking about God himself. You see, when he humbled himself and entered human time and space, he saw the world through our eyes. Wasn't looking down anymore. He was looking right straight ahead. And as such, he experienced human frustration and fear. He experienced human compassion and concern. And he experienced human pain and isolation, even isolation, even separation from himself. I mean, listen to how Mark described Jesus' last moments on the cross. Now, I think this is really crucial. About noon, the sky turned dark and stayed that way until 3 o'clock. Then about that time, Jesus shouted, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you deserted me? Man, he felt deserted by God. He was totally alone on that cross. I'm telling you, God knows how we feel. And that's good. It's like the writer to the Hebrews said, Jesus understands every weakness of ours because he was tempted in every way that we are, but he did not sin. So whenever we are in need, we should come bravely before the throne of our merciful God. There we will be treated with undeserved kindness. And we will find help. You see, through the gift, and I'm talking about his gift to us, the nature of God changed. 
And so it doesn't matter whether we're talking about gifts we give or gifts we receive at Christmas. Or that story about two people sacrificing for one another, the gift of the Magi. Or the Lord and creator of the universe offering himself for our sakes. Gifts have power. They have the power to change both the one who gives and the one who receives. And so as we exchange presents in about a week, let's also claim man the most special gift of all, Bethlehem's child. And then we will be changed. Amen.